Health Vision, WOUB's program on medicine and health. I'm your host, Jackie Wolf, Associate Professor of Social Medicine at Ohio University. Today I'm talking to Dr. Deanna Osborne about hormone imbalance in women. It's so nice to have you here today. Thank you, Jackie. You know, before we talk about imbalance, let's talk about what's normal in women. And basically, there are two reproductive hormones, progesterone and estrogen. That's right. Tell us what those two hormones do. Okay. Well, first of all, Jackie, what people need to realize, and a lot of times when people are looking at hormone imbalances, you know, they kind of feel like one hormone is the culprit, one's good, one's bad, so on and so forth, when in reality, we actually need both of them in our bodies. It takes both of them uh, for us to be able to function normally. It takes both of them for us to be able to have uh, a healthy reproductive system. It takes both for us to be able to get pregnant and maintain a pregnancy. And so, really, uh, what we want to look at is um, just uh, you know how they work together, and just the delicate balance that exists between uh, both hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Now, if I were to go through a list of what the functions were for each of those hormones, uh, it would go on and on because there there's just such a list of um, probably about oh maybe 30, 40 things that both hormones are uh, responsible for, and some. Uh, of those things are, are uh, actually, you'll see listed by, with both estrogen and progesterone where they have the same function. But in general, they work together and they actually oppose one another. So when you're thinking about progesterone, its function in the body is really to sort of put the brakes on the estrogen or just to kind of, um, it's a sort of a checks and balances system and it just kind of keeps estrogen in check. Progesterone keeps estrogen in check. Yes. Um, so when you, and basically if we talk about the normal menstrual cycle, at the first half of the menstrual cycle, estrogen mainly is what is being released. And then the second half, it's mainly progesterone that's being released. And, and as you said, it's the progesterone then that puts a break on the estrogen, is that right? Yes, that is correct. During the first half of the menstrual cycle, you'll see high levels of estrogen uh, in the, within the body. And then uh, about mid-cycle, right about when the woman ovulates, uh, you will see a, hi a high level of progesterone or progesterone spike. Uh, that's what the uh, common uh, tests that you see out there where women are trying to get pregnant and they're doing the, um, the ovulation tests. Uh, it's checking for a progesterone spike. Uh, but anyway, you have the progesterone spike mid-cycle. And then uh, gradually, as the, the, the last two weeks of the cycle continue on, uh, if the woman is not pregnant, then you'll see the progesterone just gradually taper down and then she'll have a period. If she is pregnant, then the progesterone levels should stay uh, at a constant to help maintain that pregnancy. And it keeps maintaining the pregnancy until the pl placenta essentially takes over, is that right? That is correct. The placenta takes over at about four months uh, into the pregnancy and that becomes the, the source of progesterone production at that point. Okay, so since now we're talking about the function of progesterone and estrogen in women before menopause, now these are women who are mm -hmm. still menstruating, essentially when, we talk about horm when you talk about hormonal imbalance, you're talking about imbalance in women before menopause, is that right? Is that what you're referring to? Well, we do talk about uh, imbalance before menopause, uh, but I do believe that we also see imbalance uh, after menopause, and I believe that that's part of the reason that we see uh, things like uh, osteoporosis, breast cancer, a lot of other problems that do have a hormonal link uh, creep well, up. Let's, let's talk about what hormonal imbalance is. And, and is it different? I mean, when, when, you, when you discuss a hormonal imbalance, are you looking at something different in premenopausal as, as opposed to postmenopausal women? Or is a hormone imbalance a hormone imbalance? Can you kind of define that for us? Sure. When I, when I talk about hormone imbalance, what I'm talking about is really a syndrome where uh, the body has too much estrogen in it. And it may be because you're consuming excess estrogen, but, but and we can talk a little bit later about uh, how you would be exposed to excess estrogen. Uh, but uh, at any rate, there's a, a syndrome of too much estrogen and not enough progesterone to balance it out. So that really is what the hormone imbalance is. And then what happens is we see symptoms from it. Um, in the premenopausal woman, we commonly see uh, irregular periods, uh, trouble with infertility, uh, trouble with PMS, postpartum depression. PMS meaning premenstrual syndrome. Premenstrual syndrome, exactly. Uh, postpartum depression uh, is another big symptom. And these were things that I was seeing a tremendous amount of in my practice. 
and did not like the, um, you know, the traditional approach, uh, the pharmaceutical approach to treating those because of the side effects that we saw uh, with those prescriptions. For women who are postmenopausal, um, what we see then, we see a lot of symptoms that, that uh, in, revolve around, um, around menopause. Uh, they might be having hot flashes, uh, maybe they've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, uh, breast cancer, fibrocystic breast disease, um, you know, uh, maybe they had trouble with uh, uterine fibroids, fibroid tumors in the uterus. Uh, and the list really goes on and on. Now, what causes what you call hormonal imbalance? Okay, well, the causes vary, and uh, it, it's really not just one thing. It is multifactorial, uh, but one of the, the most pronounced uh, causes, in my opinion, is an excess uh, use or uh, exposure to synthetic estrogens. Uh, estrogens that are not anything like what our body makes. Uh, they have been uh, basically um, uh, derived uh, in a lab, and uh, basically we're being exposed to those uh, through uh, various forms of hormone preparations, whether it be uh, birth control pills that we're taking or uh, hormone replacement therapy, which so many women have been uh, placed on. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have exposure uh, in that uh, the way meat is produced in our country is through the use of estrogen or growth hormones uh, to basically get the cow uh, to the market faster. That ends up uh, coming back to us, and uh, we're actually uh, consuming it that way. Also, just massive amounts being excreted into the waterways. Yeah, estrogen is very common. It's added to feed for poultry mm -hmm. and for beef to kind of fatten it up for market. Yes. And of course, that ends up in their tissues, which we then consume, and so we're consuming these synthetic estrogens. How does it get into our waterways? It gets into our waterways because as this stuff is being fed uh, to the cattle, to the chickens, so on and so forth. You know, you've got to think of a massive feedlot operation uh, where they're producing large quantities of, of, of cattle. And uh, basically, uh, you know, those cattle, th those cows excrete active forms of estrogen, as do we when we're taking birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy. Uh, uh, we are actually excreting active forms of estrogen, which makes its way into the waterways. So, so. Theoretically, I mean, theoretically, we have sewer systems, and this shouldn't be getting into our waterways. So, how how does that end up mingling with the actual our actual water supply? Are we actually drinking estrogens in in our water? Well, I don't know that 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 I would say that we're actually drinking estrogens in the water. As far as uh, from a human standpoint, what we are um, uh, being what what's being flushed down the toilet, so to speak. Um, because I don't know exactly what they filter out. But what I can tell you is that uh, many places, uh, depending on the sewage treatment facility or whatever, um, actually have this stuff dumping into rivers and so on and so forth. And in fact, it does end up making it to the water treatment facility. And uh, as far as I know, estrogen is not something, uh, nor are any other uh, drugs such as Prozac or anything like that, filtered out of the water.